This is Marshall Memorial's Sunday service for May 30th, 2021. Welcome from wherever you are in our great world to Marshall Memorial United Church. We welcome you. Thank you for being with us this morning. I, uh, I cheated a little bit. I came back to the sanctuary to light our Christ candle in anticipation and expression of the hope that we have that soon with everything going on in our province and, and in our health care, that we will be able to meet here in this sacred space once again. Let us light our Christ candle. Jesus, the light of our world. Jesus, the light of the world. During these times of COVID, our church has not been uh, still at all. In fact, we've been very active. And one of the, the aspects of our church is the outreach committee. And, and the outreach committee has been very active. And Linda Craig has volunteered to come this morning and to tell us a little bit about what's been happening and what's going to happen and invite us into the ministry of our outreach committee. Linda, we welcome you. Good morning. I'm happy to give an update on Marshall's outreach activities here. We are grateful to all of you for your continued support. This month, we have sent our annual $500 to Ancaster High to fund two $250 scholarships that are awarded each year to two deserving students that have overcome challenges and have been able to graduate through their hard work. These scholarships were started many years ago with Betty Kobayashi's encouragement, and our outreach funds continue to support hardworking local students at Ancaster High. As well, during the month of June, I would like to encourage anyone who is able to walk, run, bike, or whatever, to raise funds for Case for Kids at Wesley Urban Ministries. The funds raised will support programs for children and youth from babies to teens. Once again, Wesley is not able to run their Case for Kids event at Bayfront due to COVID restrictions. But that didn't stop us last year, as our team of individual congregants were able to raise over $1,000. <clears> when you donate online, phone, or with a check, Please indicate that you're a part of Marshall, and I'll be walking around my neighborhood again this year, hoping to raise even more funds. Then last, have fun and know that your efforts will be supporting children and youth who face challenges each and every day. Thank you, Marshall. We're continuing to find ways to walk in God's way and serve in God's world. Blessings to all. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take a quick minute to make sure everybody knows where the worship survey link is. So if you are watching our service from YouTube, there isn't a link on the video that you can click. It is below the video in the description of the video in YouTube. And you'll see there survey and the link and it'll take you right there. If you are watching your service through live stream Vimeo, it's the same thing where the link is in the description uh, of the video or in the event for that Sunday. I hope this clears it up. So when I have the arrow saying the link is in the description below, that means below the video, there actually isn't a link on the video you can click. I hope that clears everything up and please take the survey. We are really, really counting on you to help us through this and to see where everybody would like to be when we can open up again. Or you can screenshot this slide and where you see the red arrow, just type that address in your computer or on your phone and that will take you right to the survey.
fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out Ooh. Ooh. the hearts that This is Trinity Sunday. We live in the Trinity's world. It is God, one essence in three persons, known as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who create, who sustain, and who bring us into relationship with themselves, with God's self, redeeming us. We live in God's world. Our psalm this morning, expresses this. Let us hear Aaron sing the refrain for us. Ascribe to God, you powers of the heaven. Ascribe to God all glory and strength. Ascribe due honor, honor in God's, God's name. name. God's, God's holy, holy name, name and, and worship, worship in, the in the beauty of, of holiness. Glory, glory, glory to our God. God
God's voice is over the waters, God's glory thundering across the great waters. God's, God's voice, voice is power. God's, God's voice is full of majesty. majesty. God's voice shatters the cedars, splinters the cedars of Lebanon. God's, God's voice makes, makes Lebanon, Lebanon skip, skip like, like a calf. calf. Mount, Mount Hermon stampede, stampede like, like a, a wild, wild young bull. bull. God's voice forks into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness, sets trembling the wilderness of Kadesh. God's, God's voice causes, causes the, the oaks, oaks to whirl, whirl stripping, stripping the, the forest, forest bare. bare. And in, in the, the temple, temple all, all cry, cry glory, 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 glory to our God. God sits enthroned above the waters. God, God is, is enthroned, enthroned as sovereign forever. forever. You give strength to your people, O God. Now, now give, give your, your people, people the blessing, the blessing of, of peace. Glory, glory, glory to our God. Good morning. I've been asked by Reverend Kevin to lead the prayers of the people for Trinity Sunday. Like you, I pray regularly but I must admit that I've never prayed to the three gods in one. I've never prayed to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all in at one time. Let's see how it goes. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we offer up our prayer and our praise to you. The concept of three gods in one is a challenge to our human minds. But you have given us a model from nature. Water exists in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. All three are water, but with different characteristics and different strengths. Ice, water, and steam are all called water. Sim similarly, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all one, and we call that one our God Most High. Dear God, our Father, care for your people. We ask for your blessings on our leaders in government. Give them the wisdom to make good choices as opposed to political choices. We ask your blessing as well on all of our essential workers. Give them the strength and the stamina to continue in their support of others. They are the true heroes during the pandemic. Dear Father, we also ask for your blessings on our families and our friends. We offer up their names in silent prayer this morning. Dear God, the Son, you are the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and yet through your sacrifice and the Father's grace, we are saved. Thanks for your sacrifice so that we can live eternally in God's kingdom. Thanks be to Jesus, our Savior and our God. Dear God, the Holy Spirit, we ask that you renew us through the cleansing winds of your spirit. Give us the pure spirit of humility and appreciation. Make us humble in our expectations, for we are unworthy. And make us thankful for our blessings, because we surely are blessed. May we be moved by the Spirit of God so that we manifest in our lives and our witness a godly model in this temporal world. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we echo the words of Paul to the Corinthians when we ask that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, always, and amen. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. grateful to share with you today the gospel according to John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 Jesus teaches Nicodemus now there was a Pharisee a man named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council he came to Jesus at night and said rabbi we know that you are a teacher 
who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus also said in John chapter 14, verse 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Jesus also speaks on this in John 15, verse 26. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me.
Megan has read our scriptures for us, and this is Trinity Sunday. Let me just highlight a little bit of what Megan has read. And thanks, Megan, for reading our scriptures. In John, uh, verse 5, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. So we're talking about the Trinity. And one of the classic ideas of the Trinity is when we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, usually named very close together and named in a way that each take up a role. And that's one of the strongest indications. There's many others, but that's one of the strongest indications. So here we see the kingdom of God, Jesus speaking and talking about the ascent of the spirit. In John 14, 26, very important verse for the Trinity, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, Jesus speaking, he will teach you all things. But the idea that Jesus is announcing that the father will send the third person of the Trinity the Spirit. In John 15, 26, when the Helper comes, whom I, and again, Jesus speaking, will send to you from the Father. That is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He will testify about me. And again, we find that Jesus is talking about the Spirit coming from the Father, but identifying the three particular persons of the Trinity. One note, we say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in kind of a classic theological or traditional way. This is only a way to order or to communicate the Holy Spirit, or pardon me, the Trinity. And it, it does not, it's a, it's a way of talking. It's not an ordering of the importance as if the Father is more important than the Son is more important than the Holy Spirit. The reality is, that these are these persons are co-eternal, co-equal. We just, in our English language, are kind of bound to speak in that way. So traditionally, that's what we've done. Trinity Sunday, a specific celebration of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three eternal persons in one divine essence. A mystery to our minds a revelation to our hearts, and the great motivation for our souls. A mystery to our minds, because the uniqueness of God is such that God cannot really be understood. And is it a bad thing that the God who we worship can be, in a sense, a bit mysterious, a bit beyond us? A revelation to our hearts. The idea of the Trinity has not, uh, has not been a human invention, but rather a discernment about a thorough reading over hundreds of years of the Old and the New Testament. It's a revelation. God has revealed God's very self in the Trinity. And it's a motivation of love for our hearts, our souls. What, what a great news that the very, the very heart of the, of the one essence, this love that flows between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this love, we are welcome into that love. We are the objects of that love. We, God loves us with that love. And so it's a motivation of our souls to seek after God. Well, in Genesis 1, uh, 1 and 2, we find that the Spirit is hovering over the face of the deep while God is creating. And in 3.8, we find that the Lord, referring to Jesus, is walking through the garden and talking to people. This is the Trinity's world. And from the very beginning, the Trinity is active in the creation and sustaining of our world. We live in the Trinity's world, creation of our world, and invitation into ever-flowing love which characterizes the relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the work of the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, co-eternal, each possessing, each sharing together and possessing together the attributes and characteristics of God, of divinity, consistency. God is absolutely never changing. 
God is always the same forever. Eternity. God existed in eternity past and will exist in eternity uh, future. God is forever past and forever. Omnipresence or always present. Oh, this is a great thought of God when we think about prayer because one person can pray in the North Pole and another person can pray in the very farthest spot away, the South Pole, and God is equally present, equally there. Omniscient. God knows everything in, in all time and all space and therefore we can trust God well when we can't trust our own minds or other people around us. And omnipotent or all-powerful. God can do anything. God, however, never acts outside of God's character. Yet each person, each person, now you can go to the Bible and you can find where each person has those characteristics, but each person is unique in themselves. The Father usually, usually is revealed as the initiator and the source. Jesus as the one who has, who, who has promised who has come and who has promised again the incarnate God and the Holy Spirit as advocate, gifter, and guide in our lives. In Revelation 1-4, grace to you and peace um, from him who is and was and who is to come and from the sevenfold spirit who are before the throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, firstborn from the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. That's the Trinity. At the beginning, the Trinity is creating. And at the end, the Trinity is giving us the benediction. We live in the Trinity's world. Now, it's not odd. It's not an odd thing at all that God should be a unique being. Three persons in one essence. God is one. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, there is this, this ancient saying, Behold, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And yet, in the same Bible, there are times where the threeness of God are shown. In the baptism of Jesus, the Son is being baptized, submitting to the Father's will, who speaks while the Spirit descends. In Jesus' prayer in John 14, it is the Father who gives, the, the, the Son who asks, and the Spirit who descends. In our Great Commission, Jesus says for us to go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in our lives, the Trinity is active. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. There are a variety of practices, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. Second Corinthians chapter 12. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Gifting us, helping us serve, and helping us activate or practice our faith. So we live in the, the blessing or the benediction, the well-being of the Trinity, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We live in the Trinity's world. It is the Trinity's world. It's our enemy's strategy, however. It's a strategy to misrepresent Satan from whom all evil emanates, uses the instead of, often rather than the confrontational approach. The idea of instead of truth, the strategy is to affirm wrong God or wrong conceptions or wrong understandings of God and thus to subtly deceive people, to encapsulate their souls, to pull them into misrepresenting, or pardon me, misspending their limited time we have on earth, 
And therefore, through that, Satan steals life, destroys relationship with God. Satan uses deception. He uses instead of to deceive our souls and to encapsulate us. This relates to the Trinity. One essence and three persons, our Bible tells us. Eternal and of a definite character. And that definite character of the Trinity is holiness. Holiness means above and separated from all evil. Justice, God has created the world. The world is meant to work a certain way. And there are rewards for when we allow it to and we enable it to. And there are consequences when we move against God's just plans. Goodness Love, mercy, and grace, we love those words. And truth, truth in this sense means that God conforms to reality. God the creator, Trinity the creator, Trinity the sustainer, and Trinity has created and conforms perfectly to reality. Now, there's some ways that we can go wrong in our thinking about Trinity. One is, the idea that God has created, but that the Trinity is not sustaining or is not personally involved. That's the old idea in philosophy of God is like a, a clockmaker who winds the clock up and puts it on the, uh, on the mantle, but is separate from it in such a way that, that creation just winds down. We know that that's not the case. The other one is that that maybe, and this would be the other axis, or the, the extent of the other axis, God is overly involved. God is in everything. God is, and, and we call that animism. Because when you stretch that out, it means that everything is God. Everything, God is in everything. And, and soon there's this, there's this confusion. That everything is, is God, and then really nothing is God. And the reality is the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both creator sustainer and redeemer separate from their creation but infinitesimally directly involved in every area of creation when we think about god there's a couple of other ways we can we can be deceived or we can go um, askew uh, one is three gods that the father the son and the holy spirit are actually not in one essence but three separate beings without that one essence. And that makes God kind of like a committee. And as long as the committee goes well, everything goes well. But that's not true. And the other is one God. That the threeness, this, this, the, the first one um, magnified the threeness and decreased the oneness. And now the other one is to magnify the oneness and decrease the threeness. It's called modalism. But what it means is there's only really one God and we meet God in three modes. So just as you might meet someone as a, a mother, a sister, and, and a daughter, um, you, that, that's the way we meet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's, that's not what the Bible teaches either. What the Bible teaches is that there is one essence three persons, and that that essence contains the exact same characteristics of divinity, and that that essence has a definite character, and that character is portrayed in three persons. Holiness, being separate from the power of evil. Justice, allowing God's just ways to have their way, goodness, love, mercy, and grace, and truthfulness that conforms to reality fully. The Trinity is God in action in creation, in the personalities of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is God being active in creation, in the personalities of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My friends, this is Trinity Sunday. It's a miracle that God would live in such uniqueness. 
it is beyond our minds. It is a revelation to our hearts. It is something to pray for. Oh, God, help me. Give me a revelation. Give me an understanding of you as Trinity. It is the motivation of our lives. That that Trinity's divine essence of love has room for you and for me. That And welcomes, welcomes us into that great love of the Trinity. Oh, isn't it wonderful to think that God invites us into the very love of God. Amen. Good morning. Today's hymn request is brought to us by Linda and Bob Drennan, and they requested Here I Am, Lord. And I want to thank you for requesting this one, because this happens to be one of my favorite hymns as well. Enjoy.
when we think about giving our offerings in reflection upon the Trinity being God active in our world and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We think of our offerings being a response to the Trinity or a response to action in our actions. Our real offerings are lived out through the week in our heart's desire to love God, sharing and, and desiring and, and, and being hungry and thirsty for that love. Our real offerings are when we offer ourselves to be emissaries of that love to others. But on Sunday, we take a little time and we formally recommit ourselves to that life of continuously offering ourselves to be used by the Trinity, being active in our world, gifting us, helping us practice our faith, helping us serve God and through serving one another. God who we don't see by serving one another who we do see. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of the Trinity, of that knowledge of who you are. Thank you that it's so much above us. And thank you that you have revealed the Trinity, the actions of God in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds. And Lord, we we come to you and we just say thank you and we offer ourselves to be emissaries of the Trinity in our world and in our day. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been so thankful for all the people that God has placed here in the Marshall Memorial United Church family. Over the years of ministry, these people have faithfully expressed their relationship with Jesus through and within the ministry of this congregation. COVID, however, means for some people some lasting changes. Some of our members will be moving to share life more closely with their families. We welcome Jan, our board chairperson, and Frank, uh, Marshall's music director, to lead us in expressing our thanks to these people who are presently greatly appreciated and who will be greatly missed. Now I know that Jan and Frank have years and years and decades with you, but as your minister, I would like to take one moment and say from my, um, my little understanding, my little time, that I have enjoyed working and serving with you all so very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be your minister for this time. Jan and Frank, we welcome you to speak. Good morning. I would like to take a few moments this morning to recognize the contributions of three families from our congregation who have recently moved away or will be moving away shortly. Afterwards, our music director, Frank Pierce, will pay tribute to three members of the Chancel Choir. I want to express my thanks to Berna Aslan for her work on the Finance Committee and especially for her role as chair of the committee. She and her husband, Asim, have already moved to St. John's, Newfoundland. Dave Putnam has recently served on the board, as well as many other committees during the nearly 40 years that he and Kathy have been attending Marshall Memorial. He has been chair of the Ministry and Personnel Committee, chair of the board, chair of the Nominating Committee, a member of the previous, previous search committee, a member of the Prayer Partners and the Wednesday Night Study Group, head of the Men's Group, the February House Leader, and an active member of Marshall's Ancaster Food Drive Committee. Not only has Dave been a regular participant in scripture readings and prayers of the people, he has served as narrator for many of the special Christmas and Easter choir performances. On behalf of the congregation, I would like to extend my sincere 
appreciation to Dave for all his years of service and dedication to Marshall. I also want to wish Dave and Kathy, Berna and Asim, and Louise and Harvey all the best as they begin the next chapter of their lives. We will miss you, and we pray that God will continue to bless you and watch over you. Good morning, everyone. During this time of COVID, many, if not all of our lives, have changed dramatically, or in a way that we never ever dreamed of or envisioned. We have been estranged from friends and family for a very long time, and we have been unable to do the kinds of things that we have enjoyed in the past and that have become a part of our regular routine. The choir family is no exception, as we have seen many changes in the past year. Harvey and Louise Schreier will be moving soon out west to be with family. Harvey has been a strong foundation in our bass section, and besides his gifts in singing, Harvey has always been positive, engaging with other members of the choir family, and always concerned about others, kind and sincere, and in my eyes, is a true gentleman. Now it is time to be with and enjoy family. Berna came to us after meeting Lois Kearney on an elevator and asked Lois where she was going, and she responded, I'm going to choir practice. Berna and little Melody, who was with her at the time, said, oh, we'd like to sing. So Lois invited them. And the following week, they came to choir. And after that, joined the church, and the rest is history. Melody joined us as well, and we were able to watch her grow academically and musically. Berna's connection with other members, her voice, knowledge of music, and handball ringing skills has made her a valuable and loving member of our choir. Best wishes to her in St. John's, Newfoundland, as she continues her medical and scientific skills there. Kathy Putnam, I met the very first day that I arrived 26 years ago. And I have had the opportunity not only as her choir director, but as a friend to bear witness to the extraordinary characteristics and talents that she has shown in all aspects of life. As one of our strong second sopranos, she has taken part in all choir activities, always using her incredible artistic talents in setting and decorating tables for choir concerts, special presentations, fundraisers, etc. Kathy also joined other choir members of our, of our choir in attending the Royal School of Church Music Summer School back in the summer of 2019. Not only to worship and sing together, but to interact socially. Dave, Kathy's husband, has for many years supported the choir in many different ways, as our resident narrator, as we like to call him, for our concerts, both live and online. So best wishes to both Dave and Kathy as they set out to Belleville to be with their family and other close friends. All three choir members will be missed greatly, who have given selflessly to the choir, whether it be Harvey, working a trip in his motorhome around a choir presentation, Berna driving from Toronto to Ancaster for a choir rehearsal and then driving back to Toronto, or Kathy, who is sharing her talents with those in need and reaching out to me week by week by text after every service that we have done online during COVID. Dedication, talent, and enthusiasm in worshiping and singing praises to God is common not only to our entire choir, but particularly in Harvey, Kathy, and Berna, inspiring others to do their best and setting an example to follow. We wish them well. Trinity Sunday, a time to celebrate God's greatness, God's activity 
in our life. Three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one essence. And this morning, let's leave with the benediction of the Trinity. Hovering over us, resting on us, that we might live as Trinity people in this world. 1 Peter 1, 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours to the fullest measure. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can hardly wait until we can do this again. To meet at the gathering place, have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, to sit down with our friends and visit and socialize and reflect upon the service. I can hardly wait. Please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with everything that's happening at Marshall Memorial. Oh, hi!